Hello, folks. If you have uh, if you've come to hear about desert kites, mysterious prehistoric structures in Armenia, you have come to the right place. Uh, we will be getting started in just a minute or so. Thank you. Bear with me, I have something on my glasses. Well, it's now afternoon, so good afternoon uh, from, from Massachusetts. My name is Mark Mamagonian. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs for the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research. And uh, I would like to welcome you to today's program. And I would like to just make a um, brief, brief announcement uh, of an upcoming event um, in uh, the week after, week after next uh, on Thursday, December 2nd at 12 noon Eastern US time, we will be presenting a panel discussion entitled Fractured Regions and Small States, the shifting, the impact of shifting geopolitics on Armenia. And the panel will consist, consist of Dr. Gohar Iskandarian, Chair of Armenian Studies, Department of Oriental Studies, Yerevan State University, Dr. David Lewis, Associate Professor in International Relations University of Exeter, and Dr. C Carter Malkazian, author of The Ar American War in Afghanistan, A History, just published recently by Oxford University Press. The panel will be moderated by Dr. Anna Ohanyan, Richard B. Finnegan, Distinguished Professor of Political Science and International Relations at Stonehill College. Uh, I think this will be an important discussion of uh, well, a perennially uh, relevant topic and certainly a relevant topic at this moment in time. Uh, the program is presented by the Nasser Kalust Gulbenkian Foundation series on contemporary Armenian issues. Today's program uh, is the third and last in 2021 on archaeology in Armenia. Each of these programs has been made possible through the generous support of the Dadurian Foundation, and each of them has been co-sponsored by the Arat Eskijian Museum. The quality of the events and the audience response and interest certainly encourages us to undertake more such programs on this subject in the future. And I wanna again thank uh, the Arat Eskijian Museum and, and uh, its director, Maggie Goshen, for their and her lively interest in, in, and enthusiasm for this subject. And I'd like to invite Maggie to, to speak. Maggie, thanks for being with us once again. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Nasser, for organizing such uh, dynamic programs <laughs> the last one year or so, or continuously. You've kept us up to um, current with events happening, uh, whether it's historical or it's political or any current issues or historical issues, especially uh, archaeology is always been my uh, uh, my favorite subject uh, after history, and I'm looking forward for today's event. And uh, Mariam, I have to say that I'm so impressed with you, especially after hearing you last year when you were translating for Benik Vartanian's presentation. I am at our way. My hat goes out to you for your um, thoroughness, your translation, your English, your energy. I am fascinated. I myself was very uh, encouraged to do archaeology, but circumstances didn't allow me. So I'm looking forward to see you uh, progressing in your field, and I'm looking today forward for your presentation. This is a new uh, area for me. I've never heard, I think, for all of us. So kudos to you, and my hat goes out to you again. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Maggie. I, I couldn't couldn't agree more on on all points there. 
Uh, and, and again, I wanted to thank Mariam for her truly outstanding work last week, translating uh, for, for Benny Vardanyan's uh, lecture, uh, which, which was outstanding and, and very, much, uh, very much appreciated by everybody who was not able to follow in the Armenian. Um, it's been a very difficult week for all of us or most of us uh, with concerns about events in Armenia that are have been very upsetting. Um, we even talked, uh, Mariam and I, during the week whether we should have this program today, but we felt that we should and that it's important even in the face of uh, discouraging and, and, and problematic events to carry on with, with our work. Um, so I'm really grateful to her uh, for being with us today. Uh, Mariam Shachmuradian graduated from Yerevan State University with a bachelor's in history and theory of Armenian art and went on to receive an MA and PhD in archaeology. She has worked at the Department of Early Archaeology at the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography of the National Academy of Sciences of Armenia as a junior researcher. She was the recipient of a grant in 2021 from Nasser and the Knights of Vartan Fund for Armenian Studies in support of her ongoing research on desert kites in Armenia. And as Maggie, uh, Maggie. Uh, indicated, Maggie. She, she was not the only one who had never heard of desert kites before this year. Uh, this is something of which I was completely ignorant and am now only slightly less ignorant, but I know one thing. Uh, uh, I and uh, everyone in the audience will be considerably less ignorant in about an hour. So, uh, Mariam, the floor is yours. And let me just mention, as I sometimes forget to do, that please use the Q&A function, uh, Zoom Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to submit questions during and after the program. Uh, thank you. And Mariam, now the, truly the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, thank you very much, Maggie. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to express my uh, deep gratitude uh, to the National Association of Armenian Studies and Research and Knights of uh, Vartan Fund for uh, make, uh, making the research of desert kites in Armenia possible. And uh, also I would like to thank uh, the Durian Foundation and Ararat Eskijan Museum for making possible um, this presentation. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the most uh, fascinating uh, phenomena of uh, prehistoric uh, archeology span and I hope uh, that you will enjoy it. Uh, Desert kites uh, are uh, large-scale structures uh, which first have been discovered uh, in the early 20th century by uh, British Air Force pilots. And uh, why the name of this... Uh, 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 the kites were discovered during the World War and when they when uh, these pilots were flying over the jordanian deserts and why the name of this structure is kites because uh, one of the uh, pilots resembled the uh, general shape of the structure with the child toy kite and that's why in scientific literature the name of this um, structure remained as kites and why desert kites because uh, um, these uh, structures were discovered uh, in the deserts of Syria and Jordan. Uh, here you can see some more uh, examples of uh, desert kites. First two are from Armenia and the, at the bottom from Jordan. Uh, you can see one of the most distinguishing feature of the kites is that these structures have a variety of uh, shapes. Uh, the meaning of which is not known yet. And also you can see the uh, long guiding walls, uh, which uh, can sometimes can reach to some kilometers, uh, some, sometimes to dozen of kilometers. And the surface area of these enclosures 
sometimes can reach to dozens of hectares. And this is why uh, we are using satellite imagery or uh, aerial photography in order to be able to identify these structures in its complete uh, shape. Uh, now about the distribution of desert cuts. Desert cuts are, uh, have been discovered in the Near East, uh, in Armenia, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and also in the Aral Caspian zone. And today the number of identified desert cuts uh, reached about uh, 6,000. This uh, map was created by the Global Kites Project. Uh, and here you can see that in Armenia, we have about 200, uh, 200 desert kites. And also you can see that Armenian kites are a bit isolated from two groups. And uh, this, uh, uh, and this uh, uh, circumstance should be uh, investigated in the future. What is the reason of such an isolation? Mm. Uh, kites uh, started to be investigated during the last century, in the early 20th century, uh, but in Armenia they started to be investigated quite recently, uh, it, since the beginning of 2000. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, only, uh, to the, uh, currently only in Armenia and Jordan, kites are investigated on a systematic basis and nearly uh, every year are uh, ongoing excavations, while in the regions which are marked by uh, red, uh, red ones, uh, the uh, investigations have, uh, are not systematic and have uh, stopped partially, especially in the region of Northern Syria. Uh, during the century-long investigation of desert kites, we have a number of achievements. It is the data on the distribution, environment, morphology, cultural landscape, and also uh, some data on the dating, especially from Jordanian kites. While, uh, but we have also significant gaps. Uh, it is the, uh, one of the gaps is that we do not know the function of kites. Second gap is that we do not know the chronology. It means we, we do not know when kites uh, originated, where originated, how long they were used. And the next, uh, the next gap is that we do not know what processes make the kites to be spread into such a huge area. Uh, and we do, not, we do not know anything about that pro processes. What are the reasons of these gaps? The first reason is that as kites are very large, uh, they are large scale structure, which creates difficulties for their excavations and excavations are mainly fragmentary. And uh, the next uh, issue is that uh, car, uh, they are built on the bedrock and do not, uh, very often they do not yield cultural layers uh, which also creates difficulties in, in contrast to other archaeological structures which have cultural layers and artifacts in these layers, kites do not yield. And this is the reason that until today it was not possible to determine the function of kites based, based on direct uh, data and also to determine the dating of kites based on direct data. Uh, another issue is the scarcity of stratified artifacts. The artifacts uh, in the territories of kites are mainly surface finding, and it is very rare that uh, we are able to find uh, artifacts, and it is mainly in the towers of kites which, uh, about which I will talk later. And other issue, especially for the chronology, is the non-equal and uniform excavations. Uh, uh, you can see here that, as I told, uh, only in Armenia and Jordan, only in Armenia and Jordan, uh, kites are uh, excavated in a systematic way, and we do not have uh, 
uh, data from other regions, which makes it impossible to talk about the general chronology and, uh, uh, and dating. Uh, here you can see one is example from the Tmasar Armenia. Here you can see two kites uh, of different shapes. And uh, on the right part, you can see a settlement. I wanted to show this picture in order to emphasize the sizes of kites, how big they are in comparison with settlement. And this is exactly one of the reasons that it is very hard to excavate uh, this area, which is more than one hectare. And uh, the uh, distance between these points reaches about 400 meters. And it is uh, hard to decide where you should, where you should excavate especially when a kite is built uh, on the topsoil. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned today, we don't, there, today exist different uh, theories on the function of kites, uh, none of which is uh, const, uh, none of which is commonly accepted. And the reason of the diversity of theories is, that is the scarcity of artifacts and any direct data. First and most uh, uh, widespread hypothesis uh, during the century was that kites were used as game drives for the mass killing of uh, animals, especially gazelles. According to this hypothesis, the gazelles were driven inside of kite and these cells or towers were used as heights for hunters, or they were they were actual pits where animals should fall and then uh, be killed by hunters. Uh, then, uh, the, for this theory, have been given numerous arguments. As for example, travelers' accounts where where are describes hunting with the structures, and the structures are. Uh, are uh, similarized to kites. Also, the resemblance of kites with traps of other regions. Uh, gazelle bones found in, in the settlements in the vicinity of kites and also arrowheads found inside and outside of kites. However, these arguments uh, have never been analyzed in order to understand how reliable they are. And uh, uh, recently was published an article uh, analyzing these arguments. And uh, we see that the in the descriptions of travelers, this, the described structures have a morphologi morphological features that do not, uh, that are not common to kites. Uh, I mean, the described st structures uh, are not the same as archeological kites. Also, we have issue with the similarity of kites with traps of other region. Uh, you can see in the left part the real traps, uh, game drives, uh, which do not have an enclosure. They do not have a uh, variety of forms. And also in the in these uh, actual traps have been found animal bones, have been found broken weapons, dozens of broken weapons. While in the kites, we do not have uh, uh, accumulations of bones. We do not have accumulations of uh, broken weapons. And this is the main difference uh, between the kites and uh, hunting trumps of other regions. Also, there are numerous, numerous methodological issues with the arrowheads. The arrowheads in the kites are only surface findings, and they occur only in single examples, while in the uh, traps of other regions, they uh, occur in dozens. And also, uh, we do not have any evidence that, that bones uh, discovered at, uh, at the settlements in the vicinity of kites are contemporary to kites. And also other uh, issues which should be discussed in the future. And also, one of other issues is the low walls of the kites. Sometimes the walls of kites are high, but sometimes they are very low. And this leads to a problem because low wall uh, gazelles can jump over uh, 
wall of one and a half meter, two meters, and while this wall is only 30, 40 centimeters. And uh, we, it is now an issue and we, we need to discuss the kites uh, and their landscapes and differentiate uh, their fun function maybe based on the landscape. Uh, also, we have other, and all these issues related to the analysis of hunting theory are discussed in my article, recent article, which you can read and understand all the issues connected to this theory. Another theory is that kites were used as corals for the pastoralistic reasons, but this theory has also some uh, shortcomings and uh, needs to be discussed as well. The third hip hypothesis is that kites were uh, used as ritual building and the main argument are the petroglyphs found in the vicinity of desert kites at the Hema Plateau, northern Syria, where are depicted kites, about 30 kites, 30 depictions, and in the, in the, in, inside of the kites uh, are uh, animal-headed structures, uh, and also uh, some other motifs which relate to Mesopotamian iconography and uh, are of uh, mythological nature. And uh, soon an, another article will be published on uh, this material. And uh, it was also offered an hypothesis that maybe the uh, variation of the forms of kites can be related to this function, but this hypothesis has not been supported yet by uh, large-scale analysis and where uh, it will be done in the future. And these issues uh, relate, and these issues are um, discussed in my other articles, in my other articles, which all was published in Cambridge last year. Uh, now about the uh, none, I forgot to say that none of the theories uh, is commonly accepted and we need future data in order to clarify the function of kites. Now, uh, dating and phonology, the only reliable data to this date comes from uh, Jordan uh, uh, because uh, in Jordan during this last century have been conducted uh, numerous expeditions and uh, we know that in Jordan they are clearly dated to the Neolithic period for which we have uh, uh, radiocarbon data, we have also other data based on the stratigraphy of structures uh, and also on uh, archaeological materials found inside of the kites. And in other regions, including Armenia, kites are dated mainly to the Bronze Age and or Iron Age. And uh, while this data has some uh, issues and need to be clarified, however, generally talking, we know that kites, roughly, they belong to the prehistoric period uh, and they belong uh, to the period between Neolithic and uh, Bronze or Iron Age. But we need to clarify the dating uh, in each region. Uh, we need to clarify the dating in other regions, including Armenia. Uh, in Armenia uh, have been discovered about 200 kites uh, in Armavir, Aragatsotan and Shirak provinces. Uh, they are distributed on the southern and uh, southwestern slopes of Mount Aragats. And as I said previously, it is an isolated group. Uh, they do not, kites do not occur in other regions of Armenia, uh, but we do not have any explanation yet what is the reason. Here you can see some of examples. It is from Armavir, Kogbavan, uh, Armenia, two desert kites uh, located close to each other. Here are the stone rows, stone rows which lead to the enclosure and, uh, and towers. Another example comes from uh, Detmasar, Armenia. Uh, these uh, red points are the entrances of the kites. One more example from Aragatzavan, Armenia. It is also, it is located in Aragatzotan province. You can see the enclosures of the kites. Uh, 
It is more than, uh, the length is more than 100 meters, and these points uh, are the towers. Uh, cuts of Armenia started to be investigated quite recently. Uh, it, they were investigated by Armenian French expedition within the framework of Global Cuts project. Uh, also, they were investigated by the Armenian uh, Israel expedition uh, uh, in, on, in different location, and it was the collaboration. And from uh, 2018, the kites uh, are investigating are investigated by our team. Uh, it is the uh, Sol solely Armenian expedition uh, of the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnography of Armenia. Uh, our team is uh, consists of is um, multidisciplinary and consists of archaeologists. Architectures, geologists, uh, bioarchaeology, anthropology, and also uh, data creation, media, and we are constantly expanding. Uh, uh, and uh, also from this year uh, onwards, we are collaborating with the McBarney Laboratory of Geoarchaeology in Cambridge, which with Professor Charlie French. Uh, and also with uh, Dr. Mark van der Linden, for uh, who will uh, uh, take the who will make the radiocarbon analysis. Also, we have uh, friends, special supporters, uh, Hamlet Gevorkian, Emma Santelman from University of Michigan, and Edwin Portugal, uh, who are um, uh, our good friends and uh, supporters of these projects. To whom I express my uh, deep gratitude. Uh, I think it's a good happiness to have such a big team and uh, friends who help you to realize uh, this uh, important work. Our first uh, excavations uh, took place uh, in 2018 in the archaeological complex of Aragazavan. Uh, you can see two, uh, four desert kites connected to each other. And this complex consists of desert kites, settlements, uh, tombs, uh, towers, and it's very rich in archaeological uh, structures and material and represents uh, 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 high potential to understand the prehistoric landscape of Armenia. Uh, you can see the desert kites, uh, crescent-shaped desert kites, and the settlement in the vicinity, which is uh, 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 which is located uh, uh, on the boat on the slopes of a mound. Uh, during the 2018, we excavated the, the tower of the kite and also the settlement in order to clarify the uh, dating and understand the relation between the desert kites and the settlement. Uh, you can see the ISO map more clearly, the depiction of desert kites and also the elevations. Uh, Excavations of the settlement. Uh, excavations of the settlement uh, uh, were conducted by Benik Vartanian and Sona Manukian. Uh, based on the excavations, it became clear that we it is a multi multi layered uh, settlement. The first layer is represented by high medieval period. We have discovered uh, pottery and also oven belonging to that period. Uh, while the remaining seven uh, layers are represented by Middle Bronze Age uh, period. Uh, uh, here you can see the stratigraphic profile and uh, also findings in the settlements uh, have been discovered numerous obsidian artifacts, bones and pottery, which indicates uh, on the uh, function of the settlement also, we can talk about some kind of production uh, which took at the settlement, uh, production of stone tools, uh, especially obsidian tools, and also production of uh, uh, no production of stone tools. Uh, uh, complete stratigraphy is not clear yet, and during 
the next, uh, next year we are going to continue the excavation in order to reach the bedrock and understand the complete stratigraphy of the settlement. Uh, unfortunately, in the tower of the kites, we were, uh, were discovered only small pieces of pottery in the upper, uh, upper layers. And uh, because, as I mentioned previously, the kites, the tower of kites usually do not yield uh, artifacts. But I think we had some methodological issues with the excavations. And I think uh, we have another tower uh, which we are go which we will excavate during the next year and uh, I think that we can uh, gather some information uh, from the uh, composition of the soil and uh, in the right part you can see the pa uh, paleolithic tools discovered uh, in the surface area of the kites but these are only surface finds and uh, we cannot be sure that they relate to the uh, kites itself. Uh, kites are very big structures and uh, sometimes artifacts or surface findings can randomly appear in their territories. Uh, we, ha we have excavated also uh, necropolis located in the vicinity of the settlement. Uh, uh, it was a bit strange burial be because it didn't yield any uh, grave goods in order to be able to determine the dating of the um, tomb. However, uh, based on the structure of the tomb, uh, in particular that it is uh, surrounded by a Kromlech, it is a Kromlech tomb. We, uh, these types of burials occur in Armenia in, during the Middle Bronze Age and uh, Late Bronze Age. And that's why we think that uh, the most probable dating for this tomb uh, is the Middle, Middle Bronze Age, especially when the settlement in the vicinity dates to the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, we are planning to continue excavations in order to clarify the dating. Uh, one of the most important part uh, was also to take uh, to um, make the site known to students and also to uh, and we uh, many school children uh, attended the sites and they were participating in the excavations and uh, we hope to continue this project also in the future in order to uh, raise the interest uh, towards uh, our archaeology among the students and uh, school children. Uh, our next uh, excavations uh, started this year uh, with the support of National Association for Armenian Studies and uh, Research and Knights of Artan Fight. We, uh, with the excavation of Tlik archaeological complex, it as Aragatzawan, the Tlik complex also consists of desert kites, settlements, and uh, necropoly, which uh, makes it of a great potential in order to understand the archaeological landscape of uh, kites. Uh, this kite uh, is uh, quite destroyed, and we specially uh, decided to excavate these kites because uh, in, on the right part of the enclosure, are overlapping structures, and the, our initial aim was to clear as uh, kites uh, yield, uh, as kites often do not yield uh, artifacts inside of them. Our initial purpose was to excavate these uh, structures in order to clarify the upper chronological level of the kites construction. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but most surprisingly, uh, 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 this was an exceptional case that uh, artifacts have been discovered 
we had uh, we conducted uh, excavation in five uh, different areas of the kites. Uh, first area is the tower of desert kites. Uh, the second area are the structures uh, which were built using the walls of desert kites. And, uh, and sections, trenches three and four are, are the walls of desert kites. Our aim was to understand the relation between the walls or enclosure walls of desert kites and uh, uh, and the settlements built in the southern part of the kite. And uh, the last uh, area was uh, the stone row or gu guiding wall of the kite in order to understand the building technique and also relation uh, and also to do a comparison of technique uh, between the upper part and the lower part. Um, here you can see the tomb, uh, here you can see the uh, tower of desert kites, uh, tower of desert kite. Uh, the, uh, during this field season, for the first time, uh, uh, the tower yielded cultural layers, three cultural layers. And uh, in the tower uh, have been discovered uh, pottery shirts, obsidian pieces uh, clearly elaborated and also organic materials as charcoals and uh, charcoals and snails uh, all these uh, materials are currently at the laboratories of the university of cambridge and they will be analyzed in order to clarify clarify the um, dating and also we were able to um, from these cultural layers, we uh, took uh, soil samples from, for uh, micromorphological analysis, which enables to uh, understand the composition of the soil and based on it, make a judgment on the uh, possible activities that could have uh, been placed uh, inside of the tower. And these uh, soil samples, uh, are now currently at the laboratory for geoarchaeology in Cambridge. And uh, I think during the next two months, we will have the preliminary results on the composition. Uh, here you can see the final, uh, final look uh, of the tower after the excavation. It was, a, uh, the tower was constructed in the pit and it has, uh, here you can see that it was uh, it uh, was a uh, quite uh, high, uh, high tower. Uh, excavations of the uh, settlement or structures built in the uh, territory of these kites, they have yielded pottery, pottery, stone tools, and uh, a small, small quantity of bones. However, the dating, uh, dating of these structures is unclear. The, based on the pottery, based on the uh, pottery analysis, probably these structures belong to the uh, Middle Ages. And the uh, uh, construction technique of these structures uh, clearly differs from the construction technique of these parts of kites and also tower of the kites. It means that uh, we clearly can talk about uh, 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 numerous phases of uh, kites usage. Uh, 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 our excavations, uh, our excavation, the next excavations took place uh, at, at, at another settlement located in the vicinity of Kites. Uh, the settlement uh, uh, have been discovered, the pits and uh, from, the, uh, from the excavation of the settlement, it became clear, clear that uh, these structures represent the classical and uh, belong to the classical and middle age period and that uh, settlement uh, was used uh, 
uh, firstly as a wine cellar and then as a barn, which is uh, proved also by the soil deposits, uh, soil dep by the peculiarity of the soil deposits. And the last, uh, the last uh, settlement, which was uh, uh, in the last settlement, which was excavated uh, during uh, this field work, uh, uh, was uh, the settlements settlement with uh, with uh, which yielded uh, materials belonging to the early Bronze Age or Kura Araxis culture. Uh, it is the first millennium BC, and the structure had a circular planning typical to the Kura Araxis culture. And this is the first case, uh, first case that we discover uh, Kura Araxis culture uh, in the middle reach uh, of Ahurian River. Uh, if we try to summarize the results and per perspectives of 2000 uh, of this year uh, field work. Uh, the most important result is that for the first time, and not only in Armenia, but, but on the regional uh, level, we have a direct evidence uh, on the dating of the kites because we have, uh, uh, because uh, numerous charcoal samples have been uncovered and also we have for the first time we have a direct evidence for the determination of the function of kites and uh, on the other hand uh, we for the first time it was we uh, uh, for the first time it uh, was the discovery of an early bronze age settlement which clearly needs to be excavated during the uh, next years and uh, just some photos uh, on the post uh, post excavation post excavation uh, joy we uh, joy from joy and uh, here you can see the bibliography uh, used uh, during the presentation and uh, thank you Mariam, thank you so very much. That was that was truly fascinating and and uh, in, informative, um, eye opening. Really, uh, I have a couple of very basic questions uh, before we get to the audience Q and A. Uh, I think perhaps you you answered one of them already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, and that is that before the age of flight the phenomenon of the desert kite had not been noticed is that is that correct or or had it been detected on the ground level but not with the realization of the scope of the uh of of the object uh, i think the second second uh version is more probable because uh when we are uh, when we are Investing, investigating the archival materials of uh, Armenian archaeologists. They, in their works, they clearly mention uh, structures that are similar to kites. However, uh, uh, we, cannot sure, we cannot be sure that they are talking about the kites because they do not present the whole structure of, this, uh, of the structures they discovered. However, based on their descriptions, I think that uh, probably they saw the kites, but they did not saw the uh, kites in, in its full form. And that's why they did not, uh, they were not able to uh, talk, uh, they were not able to describe it in its full form and uh, uh, pre present that phenomena. Neither in Armenia nor elsewhere, correct? No, yes, neither in Armenia nor elsewhere. And and does the name desert kite uh, indicate that these exist only in desert or desert-like conditions, no. or is it? Yeah. No, no. Uh, it was uh, the name is desert kites because they first were discovered in desert kites, but researchers now they more prefer to use just kites because uh, kites have been discovered also in areas 
uh, different from deserts. Very good. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, from the audience, there are two two related questions here. One is, does Armenia have any labs where these discoveries can be analyzed instead of being taken out of the country to England in this case? Two, do the items and analysis return to Armenia after afterwards? And uh, adding the third question from, from another questioner, is there a contractual agreement as to when they will be returned or an agreement that if displayed, they will be clearly labeled as originating in Armenia? Uh, unfortunately, in Armenia, we do not have uh, laboratories uh, which, which uh, make the radiocarbon analysis. And that's why uh, uh, all uh, charcoal samples, they, uh, the analysis of charcoal samples always are done in the laboratories abroad in this case, uh, uh, in the UK. Uh, regarding the composition of the soil as well, we do not have uh, geomorphological uh, laboratories. Uh, and while the laboratory at Cambridge is uh, one of the uh, most prominent laboratories, and it's very uh, important, as this is the first case when we have a direct uh, material for the dating and uh, the, for, this, uh, for the determination of dating and function of the kites, it's very important to conduct a high quality analysis. And I think, uh, and uh, we do not have any other uh, option, especially when, uh, especially when we do not have laboratories in Armenia. Regarding the return, it depends on the nature of the sample. Uh, if uh, if uh, we are taking for example, figurines or other objects, of course they are returned. But when we are taking soil or other organic materials, there is no sense to take it because they are analyzed in laboratory and uh, are not re returnable. Thank you. Very good, thank you for clarifying that. And now you are speaking to us today from Cambridge, in fact. Yes, from Cambridge. Uh, it, can, can you tell us what the nature of your work is at Cambridge at, at this moment? or the reason for your presence there? Uh, uh, I came to Cambridge for two reasons. First one is the continuation of the research on desert kites. Uh, during the presentation, I already mentioned that uh, in the petroglyphs of Hema in northern Syria, uh, we have depictions of kites and uh, we have a, uh, 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 and these, these petroglyphs are very important because it is also a direct direct evidence for the determination of the function. And I'm working with the researchers here uh, on the preparation of the articles. And uh, another is the study and study of ancient languages, Sumerian and Akkadian, which is uh, another profile. And it's very uh, important, I think, in order to find evidence on, on the early period of Armenia in Mesopotamian texts. And it is very useful combining the archeological data and textual data in order to have a more reliable uh, reconstruction. And also the subject of my research here will be the iconography, iconographical relations between uh, in the Near Eastern in Mesopotamian iconography and iconography in Armenia. And uh, I, uh, I'm trying to expand this research. Great. Uh, question, if the kites were used at, for a group hunt of wild animals, could the towers have been used for supervision and coordination of the hunt uh, and follow up or capture of uh, or killing of the animals? Uh, unfortunately, no, not unfortunately, but not because the towers of kites, uh, they are always located in, in a lower elevation than the surface of kites. It means that the person who is in the tower, first of all, the wall of tower is higher and he is not uh, he cannot see the enclosure and coming animals, and and this is the one of the uh, problems with hunting theory. Because if that if that pits were used as heights for hunters, uh, it cannot work because hunters do not see the animals coming. On the other hand, and uh, if these were traps for animals to 
be fallen. They are sometimes closed by double walls. And uh, we have also issues from that point. And that's why the function of cells remains unclear. Uh, yes, so what, when we hear tower, we should not be envisioning a great tall tower of a, of a castle or a fortress. No, they are, they are tall, but they are constructed in the pit. It means yeah. that they are uh, at a lower elevation than the surface area of the enclosure. And there's no evidence of construction within the tower that would have allowed someone to be elevated in no it. No evidence yet, but as a, but uh, with the exceptional case of uh, these desert guides, which we excavated uh, during this year, we have or uh, we have we will do a micromorphological analysis, and maybe we will find uh, some uh, uh, we will find some samples which can indicate was there used another something uh, i think we should wait for results question are the desert kites related in any way to the menhirs and i don't know if i'm pronouncing that correctly found in areas of northwest armenia uh, uh, desert kites uh, uh, are clearly related to the megalithic uh, monuments of Armenia. They are surrounded by towers. They occur in the vicinity of towers and other megalithic monuments. However, no systematic uh, analysis has been carried out in order to understand their relation to the menhirs. Uh, now we can talk about their clear relation to uh, tower structures discovered in Armenia, but uh, we do not have any data in relation because we do not have even reliable data on the dating. It, we have many gaps and I think it will take long years in order to fill that gaps and uh, make conclusions or, on the archeological landscape of the kites. It's an excellent question. Are, are, uh, is there an Armenian name for desert kites? What are they called in Armenia? Uh, in Armenian, they called uh, Otaparuk, which is the translation of the kite, but it is uh, an artificial name as well as kite. It is an artificial name. And I think uh, one of our goals in the future is that when we understand the function of kites, it will be possible to give a proper name. For example, we have structures tomb, which, is, which reflects its, its function. Uh, we have sanctuary, which reflects its function. And I hope that in the near future, we will have a name of the kites, which will reflect the, fu the function. It will be possible uh, only after the identification of the function. Another excellent question. Is there any data collected on the direction in which the kites point, their orientation, perhaps? Could they have had a cosmological or any astronomical significance? Uh, uh, kites, uh, research, uh, have, research on the orientation have been conducted both in Armenia and Jordan, but uh, they are oriented in quite different, they have different orientations. There is no any static orientation. Uh, regarding to astronom astronomical uh, uh, issue, uh, no, any study has been conducted and uh, we do not have any information yet. However, however, we know uh, if the theory with the forms of kites will be uh, supported in the future, if they really depict uh, some objects which are related to the cult or they have some meaning, uh, maybe then we can talk about the interpretation in the future, no, not not at this moment. And again, you said uh, at the beginning that, uh, am I remembering correct, that that more than two hundred or around two hundred have been been identified within the confines of of the Republic of Armenia today? Yes. Yes. And can you another question? Can you estimate how many such structures may have been destroyed during Soviet era field clearing? In, in Armenia and have mm -hmm. surviving sites suffered damage from this practice? Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to say a very sad thing about 95 to 97 percent 
of Armenian kites is partially destroyed. And we are, uh, because uh, sometimes when they are located in lower at lower elevations, uh, they are destroyed by melioration works. And also sometimes they are located close to the mines, uh, mines uh, on stone production. And that's why they are destroyed. Uh, however, uh, recently uh, we made a list of these monuments. We described the situation with all monuments and we are going now to present it to the Ministry of Culture. Uh, Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, they are not under the state protection yet, but but we are working on that point. Well, this this leads, of course, to the next question, which is to what extent are they protected in Armenia today? They are not protected yet. Well, that that that's, that sounds like a very important thing to to do. Um, it will be impossible to study them uh, otherwise. Who discovered the kite structures in Armenia and at what elevation are these structures located or, or does it vary? Uh, also, are there any kite structures in Artsakh? Uh, the structures of Armenia, uh, according to the literature, uh, the structures of Arme in Armenia have been discovered by uh, a ge geologist, uh, Arkady Karahanyan, who was working with the French team and he was working in Jordan, uh, as I rem as I am correct, I do not remember. And when he saw these structures in Jordan, then he saw the similarities in Armenia and discovered. And then he started to work uh, with in collaboration. Uh, uh, the kites are mainly located between the elevations 900 and 1,000 and 600, 700 between the elevations, and. Uh, Excuse me, I forgot the last last part of the questions of the question. Yes, uh, are there any uh, kite structures known in Artsakh? Uh, not, not, not yet. Uh, the kites are known uh, only in, on the southern and southwestern slopes of Aragats, and uh, uh, it is a very interesting situation. I think we need to. Under I think the reason can be uh, geological. We need to understand what is the reason that they are concentrated into this uh, small uh, area. And one other question is uh, how they are related to the kites of other regions when, when they are not intermediary, intermediary kites. However, the analysis indicates that uh, the kites of Armenia are similar to the kites of the Jordan and also kites to the Syria and Turkey. It means that they are clearly related and belong to the same world, but uh, it is very strange that we do not find kites between them. Maybe they uh, are not uh, preserved due to melioration works, but we need to investigate this in order to give, a give an answer. Yeah, I don't remember again from, from your chart at the beginning of your presentation, but there was a fairly low number given for Turkey. I, I wondered if they are they are known to do exist in, in Eastern Turkey. The uh, they area exist, West, they exist and what is the most, they, the kites in Eastern Turkey have been discovered very close to the very well-known Gobekli Tepe and other, ah. yes, they are located very close and uh, that served as a basis uh, to, uh, for Turkish researchers to ascribe kites to the early Neolithic period. It is the uh, 10, 9 uh, millennia BC and also kites of Jordan to the 9, uh, 9 and 10th um, millennia BC. And uh, however, the kites of Turkey are not investigated uh, uh, as systematically as in Armenia and Jordan, and we do not have any other information and not know any other excavation. Hmm. Regarding the towers, are the depths of the tower pits consistent? Uh, how do you know when you've reached the bottom? Uh, in other words, uh, are there delineations on the walls? How deep on average do they go? Uh, Usually, uh, they go to. They sometimes can reach three, three meters or four meters, but uh, it is not in Armenia. It is 
in Syria, but in Armenia, they usually, usually reach uh, um, uh, two meters or a bit uh, higher. And uh, how we understand that we reach the bottom that, uh, first of all, the uh, composition of the soil, it's very easy to different the floor, floor uh, and uh, sometimes it, uh, and on the other end, it's very easy to identify the bedrock, which has a clear, uh, which has a, a other structure. And for archaeologists, it's it for archaeologists, it is immediately visible that uh, they reach the bedrock. Please, please tell us about the current uh, or or re recent or current or forthcoming excavations uh regarding kites whether you are involved in them directly or or not what what's the what's going on mm. uh, we are going to ex to continue our excavations both at aragazavan and three complexes because uh, these two complexes uh uh yield uh good uh they as they are consisted of desert kite settlement necropolis and uh, it means that they have a potential in order to understand the archaeological landscape of kites in its full form and uh, we are going to work with the same group and uh, yes well, and, uh, again with the same principle and probably uh, we will try to understand all that uh, we will put emphasis on the uh, dating uh, not only the cuts but also settlements we need to work more systematically in order to understand the, how they relate to the kites uh, we are going to continue the next time next year with the same principle and in the same locations very good the question is uh is it possible for academicians to write share some articles in non-academic publications so that Armenians, and I would say also non-Armenians, can be better acquainted with the ancient significance of these uh, of these sites in human development. In other words, uh, how to broaden the, the, the level of knowledge beyond uh, a, a scholarly audience to a more general audience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh... I think uh, it is a very important work to do. Uh, first of all, uh, and we are planning to do it in the near future. However, uh, it's very important, first of all, to have a reliable scientific data based on which you can uh, this, uh, you can make that data information available to wide public. And I think the universities of Cambridge, University of Cambridge, and also uh, the Oxford, they are very interested in this research, and I think it's uh, very uh, possible possible to disseminate it through not only uh, seminars, conferences, but also mm -hmm. by uh, other magazines or uh, video programs. But uh, first of all, we need uh, reliable data in order to talk about the... Um, First of all, we need reliable data. Excuse Absolutely, me. it all it, it all starts there, right? And uh, uh, and uh, uh, I think this is the direction, very perspective direction for Armenia, because Armenia is very rich in archaeological materials, and uh, it is uh, I think especially during these hard times, it is very important to show the value and heritage of Armenia in the context of world archaeology and humanity and uh, uh, we will uh, we are uh, definitely going to work uh, uh, on this direction. Fantastic. Mariam, I want to thank you again for for sharing your your fantastic work with us. Uh, it, it's really it, it fills us with a with with, with pride uh, to have been able to support in some way uh, this this incredibly valuable research and I think I can speak for Nasser and the Knights of Vartan uh, fund for Armenian studies as well to to say this is it, it's it's extremely rewarding to see the the work producing such such valuable information um, so on behalf of Nasser and uh, the Arat Eskijan Museum 
and the Dorian Foundation, we, whom we thank for their wonderful support of these archaeological programs that have taken place in 2021 and clearly laid the foundation for more such archaeological programs in the future because this is a rich and inexhaustible topic given the uh, the wealth of work as you indicate that's going on in Armenia and the tremendous potential for more work to be done on archaeology archaeological subjects in Armenia. Uh, I can only say once again, thank you so very much. Uh, <laughs> and uh, congratulations on your work. And we look forward to hearing from you a great deal more in the future, Mariam. Thank you. So to everyone, say good day and uh, stay well. And if you're in the United States, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Bye. <laughs>